Whiskey, Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskies. Today I have something from Signatory Vintage from the distillery called Breval. Have you heard of it? Well, most people haven't. It ba belongs to Pinot Ricard that bought uh, Chavez Regal many years ago. Before that it was Seagram's. Ah, many people in America know Seagram's from um, MGB, right? So what we have here is something called the cast strength collection. So cast strength means single barrel, means cast strength, barrel proof. So this was distilled on the 16th of February 2000. And it was bottled on the, 20, on the 18th of February 2001, 21. So it's 21 years old and it's exactly 21 years old and two days. Fabulous, fabulous. So it's 21 year old whiskey. It was in a refill butt, which means it was in a refill sherry butt. And um, it was cast number 6393. And there was a total of 591 bottles from this. So 60.3% um, ABV, which is a lot. So I have the theory that this actually went into the cask at over 70%. Why? That means it lost less than 0.5% per year. Now, there are whiskeys out there um, that have, the, the sherry cask might have been thick and big. Um, it might have been then stored in a very, very, very um, cool location. Or it might have just been um, a very high ABV entry, uh, cask entry or barrel entry proof. Or it might be all three. So let's think about this for a second. All right. 2021 is when it was bottled, 2000 is when it was actually distilled. Now, taking a look at this, um, I'm going to say this is a at least a second fill sherry, but I'm going to go even maybe even for a third fill, but let's say it's a second fill, all right? So um, if it's used for 21 years, maybe before that it had been used for 12 years, so that puts it in the year 1988. That's, um, and if it was actually used a third time, um, that would be another 12 years maybe. So we're talking about the 70s. Let's say this is a third fill sherry butt. So this cask was actually used, made, and sent to Scotland in the 70s. The rules for whiskey in the 70s are different in the 90s. So Paxaret wasn't a problem back in the 70s. Transport casks were not a problem in the 70s. So this might be one of those old casks. Roy from Aquavita talks about distillery wood. That's a phrase I learned from him. What is distillery wood? Distillery wood means something that is actually in the possession of the distillery. A cask that has been used once or twice or three times. You don't buy it new for someone else. You have it and just refill it. And I must admit that I really, really like this. Now, the problem with the price is 239 euros for a 21-year-old whiskey. One of my rules of thumb is 10 euros per year. Anything over that's expensive. 21 years, 210 euros. This is 239. This is expensive. This is more expensive than I would have, would have liked and would have hoped. What am I going to compare it to? I'm going to compare it to an Aldebein. Um, this is a 23-year-old bottling. Wow, I got some gems here on the table today. Um, this was 179 euros um, from Barry Brothers and Rudd, and it's only, excuse me, only 50.2%. So if you're looking for the whiskey base number here, it is the 175823. Um, and it's a 23-year-old ex-bourbon barrel, and here we have the 179149. So I'm going to pull out my very small, smart book and talk about why I picked these two distilleries, because they are sister distilleries. Did you know that? I didn't. So according to the Malt Whiskey Yearbook, which is a very, very smart book, um, we have here... Um, so while some may think that Altebein resembles an East German housing complex, Breval has often been described in more positive words. Breval and its sister distillery, Altebein, which is a 20-minute drive to the north, appear quite different regarding their exteriors, yet the two were built in the same era, in the 1973, when Chevez Brothers was owned by the Canadian drink giant Seagram's. So, both of these distilleries were closed as soon as um, Pinot Ricard took them over. So, in 2001, Pinot Ricard took over Chevis Brothers, and both of them were closed in 2002. Breval opened up in 2008, and um, over here are Altebein 
opened up actually here in the year 2005. So this was closed for three years and this was closed for almost six years. So they're actually sister distilleries. Interesting. They have almost the same maximum capacity and they've both been um, expanded over the years. So what do we have here? Look at this. This is sherry. This is bourbon. This is how a sherry cask could, and I'm going to actually say should, look like after 21 years. And this is how a bourbon cask should and could look, look, look like after 23 years. So there's 400 euros on the table on whiskey here. That's a lot of money. All right, and these two bottles. I'm happy that I shared them. I'm happy that they are going to be... Um, sent to many happy people that get little sample bottles of 5 and 10 CL and they're going to hopefully enjoy them. So let's talk about the nose here. I'm a little worried 60.3% but no nasal burn at all. The 60.3% are so well integrated that I'm surprised. I didn't believe that that is actually 60%. If you would have said 50% I would have went, yep, yeah, that's about right. And I get honey. I get a lot of honey, I get a little bit of berries here, I get a little bit of a, like a, a cacao powder mix here, and I get some spices here, a little bit of mineralness. I like. I like a lot. I like A, B, C, D, F. I like this like a B, all right? Over here, we have the Altabain. I have my video up already. Now, this smells very different, and it has to do a lot, not with just the distillery, but with the wood that this whiskey spent 20 plus years in. The ex bourbon cask has more of a woodiness, has more of a mineral moment, and has a more of a dry moment. The sherry butt, or the refill butt, has more of a berry honeyed smoothness here. Not bad, but this is much, much better. So, I'm going to take a tiny, tiny little nip. Hmm. My problem is the 60.3% are just too much for me. I'm going to purposely dilute it down to around 50%. Why? Because I have the feeling that this whiskey actually opens up at 50%. I have the feeling that at 60%, I get 60% alcohol, almost 40% than water, and it actually has more viscosity for me at 50 than it does at 60. It might be an optical or an illusion of my taste buds, but it's richer, it's creamier, it's much, much better for me at that, um, at that alcohol, that ABV. I get some orchard fruits, I get a lot of honey on here. This is a wonderful Speyside whiskey. Am I willing to pay 239 euros for it? No. Would I be willing to pay 139 euros for it? Maybe. Would I be willing to go to Whiskey Fair and try a sample of this for maybe 10, 12 euros? Yes. All right. <clears throat> so I'm not really willing to pay 200 euros for any type of bottle out there at the moment. I just don't think whiskey should, um, at least my taste of whiskey does not reflect what we have here. Oh, yeah. I wanted to mention this. Um, Every time I try this whiskey, I have the feeling I have a porcelain teacup, yeah, porcelain, and it's where my fingers out, and it's very delicate, and it's very, very, very sophisticated. I'm not that person. I have my tea mug. It has like almost half a liter. It goes into that. I put a pad of English um, breakfast tea in there. I let it, um, I, I put boiling water over it, put a little bit of water and a little bit of milk, a, bit, a little bit of sugar. And I just love to drink this tea in the morning. Big mug, you can let it fall on the ground, it won't break. Very, very nice. That's the thing I want. This is the pinky in the air. This is very, very delicate. Not normally my world. My cup of teas are what I wanted to say, but hey, <laughs> pun intended, I guess. Hmm. Hmm. Nice. Now this is how a, a sherried whiskey should taste, in my opinion. I have a nice, light, honeyed, berry moment. 
I don't have anyone screaming in your face. Hello, Sherry. I have a very sophisticated, well-mannered whiskey here that evolves over time. I personally think I'm not worthy to drink this whiskey and to evaluate this whiskey. I'm not there yet. Um, a couple years ago, I had a first edition. It was also 23-year-old, blah, 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 200 plus euros, and it was a great whiskey, but I couldn't really identify everything that was going on there. And I'm still getting a little bit of that same problem. Um, there's a spiciness to this, maybe a little bit of clove, maybe a little bit of cinnamon. Um, there's a little bit of mineral moment lingering on towards the end. It was a citrus moment there, but everything is very subtle and very, very well integrated. Uh, it's almost as if it's not shouting, but it's speaking um, poetry to my taste buds. Well done. Well done. This is a solid B. Value for money, C minus minus. Um, a, why haven't you bought it? B, buy it. B, this is a wonderful whiskey for that flavor profile if you're looking for it. Um, C, if you want to, you can, you don't need it. D, don't worry about an F, why did it wasn't even made. Um, this is the problem with the price. If, if 230 euros is for you, oh, nothing, if it's peanuts, go for it. You're going to love this whiskey if you like these old, cherry, nicely done whiskeys from the past. Many people have never had a Braval, to be honest. Go for it. Find a sample, try it. In the shops, in Europe at least, I can find this in Belgium, in Germany, in Scotland, in um, the Netherlands, in uh, England. All these shops still have some of these bottles. Um, it's a fairly new release. It's a fairly expensive release. It's a fairly exquisite release. And not everyone's going. It's not one of those hyped bottles at the moment. Look at the color. Wrong color. It's the true color whiskey and not this uh, cherry cola type of stuff we're getting here at the moment. Well done. Now, the Adabine, I must say, is not really my wheelhouse in comparison to this. I really like the Breval. This has a lot more of the, the bourbon. It's an ex-bourbon cask. This was the ex-sherry um, cask. If you're looking for an ex-bourbon cask, go with this but it has a little bit more of an astringency a little bit more of a a slight bitterness is too much but more of a woodiness involved here this is just optimal this is really as if it was if they want to hit dead center of what everything everything could and should be bam Brival, um cast number six three nine three all right so my question of the day is um yeah what whiskey can you recommend um, around the 150 euro mark or less that is a refill sherry butt and older? So it can be quiet space side, it can be something from Highlands, it can be even something from the Lowlands where I like here. Um, but I don't want peat, I don't I want that sherry cast to be quiet and the whiskey to have enough time to have matured and be fair, very, very rounded and become very, very um, uh, holistic. Yummy. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Whiskey Jason here having two single casks on the table that you will never probably find, uh, probably never ever see, but hey, rare and exotic whiskeys, right? Thank you very much. Like, subscribe, tell others. All the best. Whiskey Jason here. Bye-bye.